Okay, so hello, museum families, and welcome to Royal B uh, RBCM at Home Kids, a play date through screens across British Columbia and the world. The previous sessions are recorded, and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page. My name is Chris O'Connor, and I'm a learning program develop developer at the Royal BC Museum. The museum and my home is on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. I'm an uninvited guest on this territory and grateful to live, learn, and raise a family on this land. Um, so we've been doing RBCM at Home Kids for over a year now, and it is dinosaurs that have a particular soft spot in my heart, as our very first session was about dinosaurs with curator Dr. Victoria Arbor, who has been on the show multiple times. And today we're joined by Victoria's paleo partner. I was going to say partner in crime. They are doing no crime. Um, the opposite of crimes, um, paleo partner, collection manager of paleontology here at the Royal BC Mu Museum, Derek Larson. It's the first time, Derek, that you're on this show. Um, we're so glad that you're here. So welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah. So, and the last week you were speaking of Vancouver Island, you were up island um, near, was it near Nanaimo? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, uh, further, it was near Courtney. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, last week was very exciting time here in paleontology at the museum because there was a fossil discovery that was made earlier this year by a local um, uh, fossil collector in the Courtney area. And uh, he notified us here at the museum and we worked with our partners in government and we were able to recover that fossil before it eroded away in uh, the Puntledge River, um, which uh, you can flow relatively vigorously. And so the fossil was in danger of just sort of washing away. So we, we got the approvals to go and and collect it. And I can rotate my screen here and show you guys a little bit of what uh, of what we found. So there's the specimen. And it's, uh, there's no fossil visible because we've actually surrounded it by this plaster and burlap jacket. Um, and so it's a very, very hard outer covering that we put onto the fossil to hold it together and protect it as we transport it back here to the museum. So as you can see, it's quite large. It weighs a couple hundred pounds. So it was a, a big collaborative effort. And I was working with um, uh, Russell Ball, the finder of the specimen, as well as a number of other uh, enthusiastic volunteers uh, in the Courtney area to get that out of the ground last week and back here. So, so, the, so eventually you'll chip away at the plaster and then clean up the specimen so that it's a it's clear yeah, like it's just just the fossil is that correct yes that's correct so when you when you're in the field and you're collecting a, a fossil um, you want to be sure that you can uh, get it out of the ground and back to the museum in as few pieces as possible fossils despite being here millions of years are actually very breakable um, and they're very fragile so we uh, we want to try to disturb them as little as possible. And so what we've done here is we've actually collected all of the rock that's around the fossil, uh, as well as the fossil itself. And so all of that is in that jacket. And now that it's here at the museum, we can spend time in the lab, slowly chipping away at the rock where we don't have a, a time constraint uh, in terms of how long it can take. It can sit on, on a bench in the lab and we can remove all of the rock from it uh, at, at a, a very slow pace if necessary. No, no river is flowing through the museum. So. No river is flowing through, flowing through the museum. That's right, that's right. So this is a turtle fossil, right? Yes, it, uh, it's a turtle fossil. It's about 80 million years old. It lived at the time of the dinosaurs and, uh, and it lived in the ocean environments at that time. So there, the geology in, in BC is very complex, but in the area where we were working, it was sort of this uh, coastal shelf. Um, so at that point, uh, that part of Vancouver Island was actually underwater, and we find a lot of fossil shells in the area, things like ammonites, which are relatives of squid that have spiral shells are very common, but you also get um, 
uh, large fossil clams, fossil snails, all sorts of uh, things living in the oceans at that time. Uh, and uh, occasionally you get animals with backbones, vertebrates, and in this case, a, a turtle that was living there. Hmm. Right. So, so we're very excited so, about that. Yeah, for sure. And you should, <laughs> we, we, we all are excited about that. Um, and if this was a new species that no one had discovered before, then you might need to come up with an, a name for it. Exactly right. Yeah. So when you find a new a new species, uh, you uh, the scientist who's describing it as a new species gets to uh, come up with the name for that animal, and and it can be a pretty fun process. We we don't typically use uh, dice, but that's what we're going to be making today. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be making these paper name dice, and so on each side there's going to be different words that we can use to make dinosaur names out of. So we're going to go through that process here. So should so I? Like if we if we take a dinosaur name like Triceratops. Yes. Um, we might just know it as Triceratops. But if we break up that name, um, it gives us a little idea of what it might look like. Yeah, the name has has a meaning. So in the case of Triceratops, um, you have basically three words um, that make that up. And, and in this particular case, they're all Greek words. You can use all sorts of different languages to make dinosaur names. Um, most dinosaur names are Greek or Latin, um, but you can use any particular language. And, and today uh, I should mention that as we're filling out our cubes, if there are words that you know or languages that you speak, um, you can you can fill out your your cube which with, with whatever words you like that have meaning to you or if there's a particular place or a particular person um, that you want to you know name your dinosaur after you can include that in, into your name as well so but uh, the meaning of triceratops uh, as I said is three words it's tri which means three keratos uh, 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 which is which, which is where the serrato comes from um, in Greek, um, means horned, so it's three horned, and then ops, which means face, so it's three horned face. So that's 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 what what dinosaur names. Uh, all dinosaur names have a meaning, and that's where the the names come from. Is is that they are using words that mean particular things, and you're describing a feature of the animal or or uh, where it comes from, or you're naming it after a person, um, things like that. So that's that's where we come up with these names. Yeah, and today we'll be making new dinosaurs that maybe you have to sort of imagine what they look like because. Yeah. They exactly. don't, it, we haven't discovered them yet, um, but there might be those kind of dinosaurs out there. But it also could just be fun to sort of think about what a, what a new dinosaur might look like. Exactly, exactly So right. uh, what we'll need today, um, we put it in the chat in the comments section. Um, we'll need, again, if you have this, great. If you don't, that's okay. We have a template to make a um, box, a cube. But even if you don't have that, you can still write out the words, cut them up, and even put them in a hat that you're picking. Because it's more just like the to have it be random. And then we have the words um, that also we have that, oops, that we have that, uh, that um, the uh, PDF that you can print off. You could even just have it on your, uh, on your computer as well. Um, but we'll also say some too that you can just write down as we're doing that. Um, yeah, and then scissors and glue too. So scissors and glue. But even if, it, like, if you don't have anything, just stay with us, and it'll be fun uh, nonetheless. So, um, so Derek, let's let's get into this because I'm really excited. I have my scissors ready, and I have my paper ready. All right, so we're gonna. Go down here so you can see me work a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a little bit upside down, but you can sort of get the idea of what I'm doing. I've also put down an extra, just a scrap piece of paper in case you're, um, when you're writing on on the, the sheet with a marker or something, you want to make sure that you're not going to mark the, the table uh, below you. So I've got the, the extra sheet there. And uh, yeah, we're going to start writing down um, words from our list. So the list that we have, it contains basically two 
uh, types of words. There's prefixes. Those are the, the first part of the word. And then the suffixes, which is, are the last part of the word. And um, we're going to be making three cubes today here, one at a time. Um, I've already made this one. Um, so we're just going to be finishing off the, the latter two. Uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah, going through the process and then we'll, we'll show you how they work. So I've got my sheet here. And then on each of these uh, boxes, I'm going to write a word. So I'll start out. Starting out with a long one. This is archaeo, which means ancient. Gonna make sure I spell it right. Some some of these words are very very hard to spell. All right, so there's archaeo, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of there's a lot of dinosaurs that are ancient because they're often millions of years old. And, and gonna, I would imagine, Derek, that it doesn't matter which, what box you're putting the letter, the word in, just as long as there's only one word or yeah. One, uh, yeah, one in each box. Exactly right. Yeah, it doesn't matter which, which word you put in which box. And again, you don't have to use these words. You can use whichever words uh, have meaning to you, but these are some good examples. Um, so here's Bronto, which means thunder, which evokes the... Uh, the ground shaking when a very large dinosaur walks. So, you know, Bronto might be a, a good, uh, uh, we were talking earlier about some of the, uh, the, the long neck dinosaurs. Brontosaurus, for instance, is the thunder lizard. And then, So here's serato, which means horn. And on the sheet, it just says Sarah, but that's it's it's fine if it's just Sarah too, right? Uh yeah. So the that's that's the uh, the the other thing that. Uh, all of these words, when you go to combine them, you might have to change up the connecting vowels a little bit. Um, if you get like two O's next to each other, you don't usually have two O's together in a word because that usually makes a different sound. So um, you would just chop off one of them. Um, or in, in some instances, you might have to add an extra vowel just so it flows together a little bit better. Um, but yeah, depending on which version of the of the sheet you have, that it might say Sarah or it might say Sarah. Uh, this is Dino, which means uh, you you might be familiar with this without the e, um, because that's where the word dinosaur comes from. They drop the e and and you get dinosaur, um, which uh, some people say means terrible lizard. But terrible these days, the meaning has shifted a little bit. The, the, and and today terrible just means bad. And these aren't bad lizards. Um, what what, what uh, it really is, um, is the, the sort of older meaning of terrible, and that is uh, fearfully great. So these are the fearfully great lizards. Uh, okay. yeah, I like the fearfully great. <laughs> exactly. All right. And then here, we're going to put die. which means two. So if you have two of something, and then here, we're gonna put megalo, which means big, which also applies to a lot of dinosaurs. And just a okay. reminder, like Derek was saying, uh, if you wanted to put other things in here, you could as well, like other languages. Um, but this is a, it's a really nice beginning of possible prefixes. So words that are at the beginning of a word or parts of the, that are at the beginning of the word. Yeah, so here's, here's our sheet now. Um, so we've got all of our, our words written on there. So now the next step is we're going to cut it out. So we're gonna be cutting out 
just on the outside lines. On the inside lines, we're going to want to leave them there because that's how we're going to make sure that we know where to fold it and then where to glue. But just just along the outside, we're going to we're going to cut that out. And if you're following along at home, um, you might need uh, a bit of help with scissors potentially. So you can ask somebody for for assistance if you would like. Um, but we, yeah, we're just going to start cutting. Yeah, some of the edges are a little tricky to cut when I'm noticing. Um, so definitely get a grown up if you if you have one around, <laughs> find a grown up and uh, and hopefully they can help with the cutting if if you're having any problems. Yeah, some of the corners get to be very tight. This is a nice template to have if you're if you want to have a pair of dice. Uh, you could just put numbers on it as well and make your own dice. Mm -hmm. I was noticing, Derek, that your your handwriting is so neat. <laughs> um, and I imagine as a collection manager at the museum that you need to have really neat handwriting. It's Maybe definitely helpful. Uh, my handwriting is not always neat, depending on the situation. But when when called for it, I can I can produce neat handwriting. It's very useful to be able to when you're when you're you know communicating with people uh, via the stuff that you write down. Sometimes you know years in the future, uh, having your notes be very easy to read is very useful. So Derek, how old were you when you were when you started to get really interested in dinosaurs? I have been interested in dinosaurs since I was three years old. Three years, wow. Yes, and so uh, I've wanted to do this job for basically as long as I can remember. Ah. So what 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 happened when you were three years old that got you interested in dinosaurs? I'm not 100% certain. I have sort of have some guesses. Um, but uh, one of the things, so, so I always uh, liked uh, animals and nature and things like that. Um, and I think what happened when I was three years old is I was watching Saturday morning cartoons, which I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Um, but I was watching I, some I cartoons, and and I was watching an episode of the cartoon DuckTales, and DuckTales had a recent revival, a, a reboot, but the, this was an old episode of DuckTales, and they had, uh, in the episode, they went to sort of a lost world um, where there were still dinosaurs around, and... Uh, and that, that definitely made an impression on me. I don't know if that's what got me interested in dinosaurs for sure, but I remember that being one of the things that I loved when I was a kid. Yeah. I loved the idea of going, going someplace uh, and, and seeing real live dinosaurs uh, millions of years after they went extinct. Yeah. And then probably Jurassic Park as a, as a movie. <laughs> yes, except that when I when when Jurassic Park came out, I was actually too young. My parents wouldn't let me go see Jurassic Park in the theaters. So oh, yeah. I I did not see Jurassic Park until a couple of years later when I was a little bit older. Uh, yeah, I believe I was seven when Jurassic Park came out. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be a little scary for a seven year old. Yeah. I saw I remember seeing uh uh, Jurassic Park, The Lost World in theaters, though. Ah. So then you just kept being interested in dinosaurs, and did you go to school, um, like university, and do things that related to dinosaurs? Yeah, I did. So um, in, in university, I uh, enrolled in a paleontology program, an undergraduate program, um, which was basically a double major in biology and geology. 
showing up all right. Oh, I'm a little bit off camera here. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, and and then uh, after that, uh, after completing my undergraduate degree, uh, then I did uh, my graduate degree. So a master's degree, as well as a PhD. Mm. So lots of years of studying. Yes. Yeah, I, I was at university for a long time. <laughs> but studying something that you love, so that's good. Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely very very interesting, and I would have lots of interesting conversations. You know, always excited about the new the new fossil discovery. Yeah, and chatting about that and what we thought of it. So that's that's my my favorite thing to do when I get together with other paleontologists is talk about talk about the newest the newest science that's been done. So just a reminder, here. if when you if you're cutting, um, I just finished cutting mine here. Um, if you don't have this template to create the cube, that's okay. You could write down those words um, and just put them in a hat, or like put them behind. Um, I don't know. Maybe throw them up in the air and whatever lands closest to you. Yeah, or in a bowl <laughs> or any sort of cup or container or anything like that. Yeah. Because we just want to have a, a random assortment. Yeah. You're getting pretty close, it looks like, right? Yep, I am done cutting. All right. So the next step is actually that we are going to fold it. So uh, on all of the lines that we have left over, we're just going to fold those over so that they're ready to be glued. Doesn't really matter what order you do them in. Derek, can you put that there? Oh yeah, so we could be. Folded that over. So the little folds and the bigger, or the little flaps and the bigger. Yeah. There you go. And if you're doing this out there, just do the best you, that you can. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, so just as, as best as you can to create those folds. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we wanna just make sure that, that we've got the flaps that we can add our glue to and that we've got the faces that we can read on the outside. Yeah. Yeah, that would, <laughs> you don't wanna fold it in so you can't see the words. You wanna make sure that you could see the words. So every line that you see, just just folding it so that it's easier to to use once we put it all together. And this, if you have your glue stick, you should have that handy right now because that'll be the next part of this. And if you don't have glue too, you could always use just tape too. Alrighty. So now going to do some gluing. And again, this is where having an extra sheet on the bottom is useful because you don't want to make a mess with the glue. But just get a couple of sides going here. And then I'll add the rest of the glue in a second. So if we're going to glue one side here. Oh, uh, Derek, can you put that down a little bit? Just oh, so sorry, I'm a little bit out of shot. Sorry about that. Hopefully everybody could see that okay. So I just glued a couple of the flaps there. So I've glued one side here, and then we're gonna glue another side over here. And then you just wanna make sure that that the the flap is is contacting on the inside. So you get a good, Nice sticky surface on the inside that attaches your side. 
All right, and so we've got a little, a little box with a lid now, and now we can add our last bit of glue, the last couple of flaps. It's a little bit tricky, um, so just take your time and you could come back to this later uh, after the session and, and get it. But yeah, also- you might, you might need to get a little bit of help on it. That's all right. Yeah. I need a little bit extra glue on one of my sides. Alrighty, bring that down. And then you want to make sure all the flaps are on the inside. Go, and then we press it all together. And most of the glue stayed on the inside for me. The, a couple, a couple of points, the glue is escaping out, but mostly okay. Great. So I, it's, I'm looking at the time. I wonder if we should just have the the two dice. So we've got the. Yeah, I think our, now that now that everyone um, gets a sense of how to make the dice, um, later you'll be able to do this again with the suffixes. So you can do the same thing, but then add in the the suffix, so the the words that come at the end of the the name. Yeah. So just to give you a little bit of an example here, um, let's use Saurus for an example. So Saurus means lizard. Uh, so that's going to be our suffix, and let's get a couple of prefixes here. So we're going to shake up these dice. Alrighty. And so now we've got Brontoteratosaurus. Brontoteratosaurus. And that means, as I was saying before, so Bronto, which means thunder, and Terato, which means monster. So here we have the Thunder Monster Lizard, which is a pretty intimidating name. That sounds like it would be a very big dinosaur, um, or perhaps a meat-eating dinosaur that that has lots of, of big scary teeth, and that's why it's a, it's a very much like a monster. Uh, and and Saurus, which is sort of your your generic ending for a dinosaur, a bunch of different dinosaurs because they're all reptiles, uh, which are like lizards, but but not quite. But we use the the uh, the Greek word saurus for lizard um, to, to end a lot of our dinosaurs. So that's a good example. Um, we can use here um, uh, onychus, which means- Actually, um, Derek, yeah. Derek, I'm just gonna, maybe um, if if any, anyone out there either on Facebook Live or Zoom was able to make their cube or cut them out and pick one, if you in the chat or the comment section, if you can roll your dice right now, and um, just put in the chat or the comment what comes up uh, and we can sort of create it together. Is that okay, Derek? Yeah, sure. That sounds great. Um, so yeah, so if I'm gonna roll mine right now. Uh, and I got Serato. And we'll see if anyone else uh, was able to come up with one as well. I know you're probably still making your cubes, but <laughs> but if we had serato and then another word, what do you do think, Derek? Do you want to? Do you want me to add one of mine? Roll one of yours. Sure. All right. So I got metro, which means measure. Uh, so serato metro. And then what would be this? We could uh, we could randomly uh, pick. We could say uh, Terex, which means okay. wing, if you'd like. So that's uh, that would mean in this particular case, um, uh, sort of measurement uh, horn wing. So. This is not like any any dinosaur that I've seen before, but if you had some sort of horns on your wings, maybe they had the, some sort of weird spike or claw on the wings. And metro just means that we would sort of have a, um, a, a different measurement. So if you had, say, multiple different horns and one horn was really big and one horn was really small, 
on your wings. That would be a way to uh, describe this dinosaur and a, a dinosaur with this name. Because uh, as you may or may not be aware, uh, birds are dinosaurs as well. So uh, you, you often have several different dinosaurs that have Terex in the name because they have wings, because they, they are birds. Mm. And raptor as well? Yeah, raptor is another one. Raptor means thief. Um, so, uh, and this is sort of along the, the lines of thinking that, that, that uh, some of these predatory dinosaurs would be, uh, you know, stealing uh, small prey or maybe eggs or something like that from some larger dinosaurs. And that's, that's where that name comes from. Great. Well, um, Derek, I didn't, if you want to put your camera back up to your face. Your to your ops. Um, uh, ops, yep. <laughs> we're, we're, um, teaching, we're teaching everybody Greek today. Yeah, totally. And once you do know these words, and you then you're you when you start to to hear the names of different animals and particularly dinosaurs, you could start to understand what they might look like, which is which is fun. That's part of part of I imagine, Derek, your job is to understand different kinds of um, uh, different kinds of uh, species throughout time, um, and by understanding them, by by knowing words and by knowing their the word origins, you you get to understand what these kinds of plants and animals are like. Yeah, a, a good a good name is is very descriptive, and so um, by by knowing what these words mean and how to apply them. You, you learn a little bit by this, of the, about the species just by, by using them. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a handy, handy thing that scientists use and we're going to continue to use it as we discover new, new dinosaur species. Great. And I have my little cube here. Um, so thank you for that, Derek. And if anyone needs to go back, you can look, watch this, uh, video again uh, to figure out exactly how to make that cube um, and also then to add and do another one for the suffix as well. So um, so thank you so much, Derek, for joining us today. Um, it's really fun to think about words, really fun to think about different kinds of dinosaurs and how they're described. So, And thanks also for showing us the, the turtle fossil, or at least yeah the outside of the turtle fossil. Yeah, my, Another my pleasure. Another time we'll have to see the actual. It's very exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when we can show off the inside, which yeah, uh, hopefully won't be won't be too long. But uh, yeah, it, it will be a, a something I can update you on later. It's like a plaster present that you get yeah, to Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining in. Um, go dinosaurs. And, uh, and we'll see you next week for collage art. Uh, so bye everyone.